All right, so then we want, we don't want to leave it like this, why? Everybody gets taught to shave a poodle face like that. It drives me insane. I was taught to shave a poodle face like that. Okay? Why? And, and why do we cut it off like right here when we're making a scissored top knot? They look like a bobblehead. It's ridiculous. Or just here. Yeah, right behind the occiput. It's just, it's stupid. It, it doesn't make any sense. But that's what, if we're taught that, that's what our, our eye tells us is correct. So we always want to do it. But what we want to do is he's... Got a decent neck, but we want to make it look longer. So we come right down in a V shape, and we start right here, and we go straight up like that. And then we trim it in. And if you do that, you generally won't make it too long or too wide. So set your clipper sideways and just go straight up like that and aim for the bottom of their chin and make your little mark. And generally, right below the Adam's apple, their little bumpy in their throat is a good place to do it. Okay, we found a really pretty poodle under there. Thank you. <laughs> there him is. <laughs> All right. I'm having a hot flash. Can we turn the air down just a little bit? That would be awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so now we found our poodle face. Now we're gonna find our poodle butt and the tail. Why are we gonna do it that way? Because you always go top to bottom and front to back. Blow drying, grooming, whatever. Because we wanna always pull everything together in the middle. If you try to do the front and the middle and then the back, you always end up with your front too small and your back too big or vice versa. So front, rear, and then the middle, no matter what you're doing. Or top to bottom or bottom to top. And then fix the middle. Am I making sense? Okay. All right, so now we gotta reset Mr. Tail because that's been big floofy Asian fusion too. I couldn't decide what to do with it so I just kept letting it grow. So we find where the tail meets the body. What does the breed standard say? Their tail is set up high. So if it's not set up high, you need to make your V shape up here a little bit longer so that it looks up higher. And you need to leave more hair back here and create a little shelf so your tail looks like it's up on top of the body. Still making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. You look a little lost. Want me to say it again? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> okay, so what I do is I find where the tail meets the body, especially with big hairies, right? Just going to make like a little ring just so we can figure out where exactly everything is. If I didn't know, pretending I don't know this dog. So now we've found where his tail actually is and where his tail set is. He has a pretty good tail set. He doesn't have a whole bunch of shelf back here, so I'm going to make a little V. So here's what we do. We lay the clipper down right where we just made that little spot and we rock it forward and towards the center. And then we lay it down next to the tail, rock it forward and towards the center. And then you have a nice little V shape and you just clean it up on the sides. And then when we, when we scissor his little rear area there, we'll fix all the edges. But now we have it set. The other rule of thumb is where you, if you, where you want your band to be, I don't care if it's a full tail like his, I didn't dock his tail. If you hold the tail down, Look where the little butthole is. That's where your band should be. Not way up here, it's not a popsicle stick. Mm -hmm. Down here, at the, if you put your finger at the bottom of the anus and hold the tail down, that's where your band should be. Okay? And now we've got a great big long tail now and we don't need all that and he has an undocked tail so I'm gonna trim the top of this almost to the very tip of his tail which is right there. and then we'll fix the rest of it later. But again, you want the top of the tail 
Why did we do that? To be even with the occiput that creates that square. So no matter what you're doing, if you've got a little bunny tail that you want to certify with that dog, you're going to have to grow out all of this hair and make it round and spray it up so it looks like it's even with the occiput. That's how you correct that. And not the hair, the actual bone. Okay? All right, so now we got that part. I think the hardest part for me when I started learning the Continental and the saddle was trying to figure out where to put my lines. So we've got a decent little dog. So first thing you try to remember is where do you set bracelets? So that's your first line no matter what, right? Because you want bracelets on everything. If you're doing a Continental or a saddle, it has bracelets. So we set that first. We know where that goes. That's right above that hock joint no matter what. In a toy, it's one finger. In a mini, it's a one and a half. On a standard, it's two or three fingers above that hock joint. You lay your finger right there like that, and you go, okay, that's where, I'm at. That's where I want my line to be. Then what we have to do is we have to split the rest of this in half so the knee is in the middle. That's how you set those lines for the saddle. One, two, three. Okay? And then it goes the same here. Wherever that jacket would be in your Continental, which is the, top, the bottom of that last rib, this is where your line is going to be for the saddle portion, right there. So now you have that, and this, and this. And this should be three proportionately, if you can do it. Um, and again, anytime, like I told her when she was first setting her in, we had to make some adjustments after we first set her in, because you're going to make a mistake. So don't try to think, oh, I'm going to do this trim and go to competition in eight weeks. I'm going to set it in, you know, in August when we do our, when we do our class. Because you're going to mess it up and it's going to be right. I don't care how many times you've been doing it. You know, now, if I was a professional handler and this is all I did every single day, all day long, I might be better at it. But you're, it's going to happen. You're going to set a line too wide or in the wrong spot or something like that that has to be adjusted. So the first thing I generally do is I find where I want this jacket to be and I make a little line with my comb. If you've got halfway decent hair, you can do that. You can see where you want it to be. And then I just brock it all the way around back and forth so I can kind of see where I want that line to be. And then I use my scissors because I'm not going all the way down to the skin. There's my straights. There they are. Then I use my scissors to essentially just cut a line. So even if you mess that up, you're still not all the way down to the skin. You're just setting a line for you to come back with your clipper. And if you have a decent dog, it's almost always right where you want your right where you would want that tuck up to be if you were doing a German or a modern trim. It's the same, again, the same principle. 